Welcome to the Profit Talks Podcast, hosted by the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. This show is the go-to resource for business owners seeking empowerment, education, and resources to succeed. Join us as we connect you with experts, share the triumphs of fellow entrepreneurs, and reveal the wealth of assistance available to you today to level up your business. So let's go. Let's dive in and learn more. We're going to jump into the water world here and try and understand how you as a small business might be able to splash around in that world and make some impact here and maybe make some money with the man whose job it is to help small businesses find their way in this uh, water world. We have with us John Arena, and you are, let's see if I get the title right. I'll let you say the title. I'm a business outreach manager and community engagement. And for the? Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. Okay. We got to do a couple minute discussion here. Try to keep it brief. This world of water is mysterious for most of us. The water that we all drink and consume and use here in Southern California is collected by you guys from a couple of sources. You from the up in north, the Sacramento Delta and the Colorado River, right? Is that exactly. where most of the water comes from? Or yes. any other sources? Just those two. Over the years, I think Metropolitan has done a phenomenal job of, of planning out. We don't plan for next year. We don't plan for five years. We're looking at 20 to 50 Absolutely years. Absolutely, got to. And so those are the major sources that have been around for 100, 100 years ago. The Colorado River Aqueduct was built. About in the 50s, the State Water Project in Northern California water started to flow down to the Central Valley into Southern California. But they've done a really good job in the last 25 years of increasing local supplies, supporting other water agencies, right. developing their own supplies. And so all this water you collect, yeah. and then you sell it, basically, to things like, I think there's some sort of, the city of Los Angeles has some sort of municipal water district or something, or whoever you sell it to. Or, all I know is in Orange County, we've got MODOC, which is the municipal water district of Orange County, yes. right? And they purchase it from you and then distribute it again, redistribute it to however many water agencies there are in Orange County. There are quite a few. Yeah, we're classified as a wholesaler. So yes, we send, sell to the member agencies like a MODOC. They distribute to the retail agencies who then serve the homeowner. Right. Okay. So all that's how water flows. Now, we're not here to talk about water so much as this program that was put in place. And I didn't realize that this was a number of years ago when Arnold Schwarzenegger was governor, which says that 25% of government contracts have got to go to small businesses. I had no idea it was Arnold that put that in place. Talk about that a little bit, because you were on some advisory board with him. You know, in those yeah, days. It, it was a real honor. Uh, our program was launched in 2002. Poetson's board of directors and its leadership really felt it was critical that as a public agency that we reinvest it. That was the key, is it's economic development. We right. all know without water, we don't have an economy. We, we, we don't have anything. We right. don't have life. Right. So the right. water district really said, let's make sure that we are also giving back to the businesses that are buying the water. Then a great example was when Schwarzenegger became governor, he held everybody accountable at the state. They spend upwards of 9 to $10 billion a wow. year. Wow. And he said, let's do it. Let's be better. Let's reinvest in Let's that figure out how we use that money. Exactly. Let's not just send it to what I would assume, most people would assume, would be big companies who have the scale and capability and contacts and mm -hmm. Lobbyists or whatever it is required to and understand the labyrinth of rules and requirements and does stuff You would think it's mostly big contractors that do this stuff and yet a lot of these things can be done by small businesses And, and Schwarzenegger saw that and said why don't we spread the money? Let's make sure mandate the 25% of these contracts have to go to small business Exactly. exactly. Yeah, so th what if that and I got to tell a quick story here I said what was Schwarzenegger like and you said what? He was bigger than life. And he, that's what I would picture. Yeah. Isn't that what everybody, he, he physically was bigger, and his persona was bigger, his celebrity oh, nature. And that seemed to allow him, whether you voted for him or not, whether mm -hmm. you think he was a good guy or not, that gave him something us didn't have, which was an immediate way to cut through the noise and to get people's attention. Exactly. It was a special time. You um, talked about taking a picture with him, and you spent half the time looking at him, and he said, don't look at me, look at the camera, <laughs> whatever. How we have to do our bad Arnold here, right? <laughs> yes, quick quick picture, shake the hands, and next next one up. <laughs> Photo on. So anyway, yeah. right, so since then, the and I don't think most businesses realize that we've talked about it a little bit on this show, through our contracting center. The contracting center, obviously, for the SBDC, is there to help you, a small business, figure out if you got something that can sell to 
a county, a fed, a state, a municipality, something here. All these government agencies are spending a ton of money like any other business. And is it all big stuff or do they need little stuff? Do they need somebody to clean the rooms? And they also need somebody to do environmental impact studies or something else. Big. Does it cover that wide a range? It, it is so complex, like you just described, the different levels of government. But if I just focused on water, the, the key for us 23 years ago when we launched our program was the SBDC. We needed to find a source that was had credibility to the small business community. because And access to them and was talking to them. Yeah, yeah. Right. and that was key for us. We didn't want to just go out there and that lip service, right? Oh, we have right. this great government program. We're going to give back to small, diverse businesses. And then, and who would hear of it? Yeah. You'd run ads, you'd put things, but most small businesses would miss it or ignore it or not understand it. It's not really for me. And so here you got this money you want to pass off to small businesses. You needed a conduit to do that. And the SBDC is set up to small business development centers are set up to do that. Exactly. And we want to make sure that we've always told small businesses, have a diverse portfolio. Don't just have all your eggs in one basket. Right. The government sector, even through the pandemic, through the 2008 collapse, you still need water. You still need infrastructure. The infrastructure is getting older. And we realized with our capital program that is now almost double what it was in the past, that we've got to maintain our system so you can have the reliability of turning the tap on and getting water. But we need businesses, like you said, I, I like how you said, you do everything from janitorial services to building dams. Diamond Valley Lake, that's a <laughs> two, three to billion dollar project. So right. we need subcontractors, you need suppliers, you need hundreds and hundreds. Of you need companies. security guards for that project. You, you need all sorts of things. You need somebody to maybe put porta potties out there yeah. when you're doing these projects or things that a lot of small businesses say, I can handle that because we don't think of ourselves. I'm a small business and I don't think of myself as being able to do something for the government on that scale. I, it, I picture you got to have 80 billion people and staff and, and <laughs> giant resources and everything, but maybe not. Maybe there's some little specific niche that you can supply that they're looking for. Yeah, and we tell people, look at your capacity. What can you handle? Do you want to take on an agency like Metropolitan? Remember, we're the wholesalers, so our pipes are massive. You can drive yeah. trucks through our pipes. Wow. But then you have a retail agency like my agency, the Irvine Ranch Water District, and so the pipes may be 12 inch in diameter, six inch. <laughs> right. So as a business owner, hey, I'll, John, I want to sell Metropolitan Pipe, or I want to sell you this type of equipment for your, let's take a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. And that's what my team does at the Metropolitan Water District, is we try to coach and give people information about what we buy, how we buy it. We buy things perhaps uh, through an RFP, an RFQ process. Which stands for request oh. for proposal or request for quote. Or qualifications. Okay. Yes. Right. All right. So here's a, give me some idea how much money you spend just as an agency. What's your budget just to do stuff? Not to, I don't know, whatever you do, however you do it, it's not just to employ the people. Sure. It's, to, it's to keep this business rolling, to keep the water flowing here. What, what's your budget roughly? It's complex. It's just about a <laughs> It depends. It's about a billion dollars, <laughs> but there's a lot of other contracts in there. So I wouldn't say it's a billion because we have contracts with other state agencies to buy water from Northern California. So that could be $400 million right there. Right. That's have. But if you're talking about opportunities for small business. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, yeah. how, how much money I, are we talking about? I would say three to 400 million a year. And 25% of that is mandated. You've got to find small businesses. That's right. And your best or one of your partners, maybe not your only partner, but one of your best partners you're telling me is the SBDC because they're already helping work with small businesses. Oh, absolutely. And the Inland Empire group is phenomenal. We do their semi-annual conferences, and there's three to 400 businesses there. And we always just find it like there's startups. There are people that family-owned businesses mm -hmm. who come who maybe do signage. And we say, we don't need signage. But then we coach them or introduce them to a general contractor or another big firm, and they have to meet the mandate, right? So right. even if we do business with a lot of big firms, but we also work with those big firms to make sure that they carve out a piece of their contract for 25% to subcontractors. That's key because yeah. it isn't necessarily I'm going to go supply signage for all the offices right. for the for your agency, but it might be when you're building the dam, they need some signage out there. And maybe it's simple stuff, men's rooms, or maybe it's mm -hmm. conference rooms, or maybe it's directions or something here when you're pulling up in the parking lot. All this signage, whoever you give the contract to to build that, build the parking lots, to build the buildings, all this stuff, they've got to take some of that and carve it out and show that they have small business partners in the process when they're bidding for this. Right? Exactly. And a lot of firms, they start as subcontractors in hopes of building the capacity so they, they can increase their bonding capacity right. and other things. 
And then when water districts or any other public agency, they'll say in the bid documents, we need X amount of years of service or, or experience. A lot of small businesses are like, how do I ever get it if you never give an opportunity to be the, pro <laughs> the prime? So we thought that 25% mandate to large uh, companies was, was going to be critical in building that capacity. I think that's the key. That's So I might I make signage, okay, let's say. Okay. And I you're building some building, some new office. And it's in my area. It's in the Inland Empire. It's in here in Orange County. I can handle enough signs for a building. That's what I do. I can't do it for every building all over the state, maybe, and, and install them. And do, I'm not big enough to do that. So when somebody's building that building for you as part of that contract, they have to show that they've got some small contract. And then that's how I build my credibility. That's how I build my qualifications. Yeah, I worked with the state. I did some small projects, and I'm ready for a bigger project here. Great. And one other example that I have for my career that was one of the highlights of my career is I met a woman-owned business out of Oceanside, and they had a safety company, and she really wanted to do business with us. But we have five mega warehouses. Mm -hmm. Three of our treatment plants are the biggest in the world. Hmm. So you're, we want to make sure there's consistency in our warehouses so then when an operations person goes into a warehouse in Los Angeles, they're getting the same equipment that we have in our Temecula exactly. facility. So we needed companies to be able to deliver just in time or next day delivery. So she was like, I can't supply $2 million next day on safety supplies. I said, unfortunately, that's how we buy. Right. But we introduced her to a water agency out in the Inland Empire, a Western Municipal Water District. And she, I saw her maybe three years down the road. And she said, John, because they spot buy. They were decentralized. So they were able to buy safety equipment. They only have maybe 100 employees versus our 1,000 operators right. in, in operations. And all of a sudden, she's, oh, my gosh, my business really just took off because I was able to supply eighty thousand dollar um, purchase orders instead of two million dollars exactly my i can handle my my line of credit with my suppliers is big enough to do that but they're not going to let me go order two million dollars <laughs> worth of stuff and wait and then there's a process you guys probably don't pay in the next day it's probably 90 days or six months or some crazy process here. We, yeah so i've got to be able to, to handle all those things as well all right, give me some crazy ideas of things that you've seen people buy. There was a good example, some safety supplies. Anything, somebody told, when we had the contracting center, I'll, I'll start the conversation. Okay. She said, I said, but it's the contracting center. It's got to be contractors. It's got to be people who supply bulldozers or electricians or plumbers or things of construction. She said, no, the contracts are for everything. They're a business. They need somebody to put signs up. They need somebody to write handbooks. They need somebody to give them some sort of seminar training or other sorts of thing. She said, you wouldn't. And, and the example she gave is a guy who had just started a janitorial company. He had a handful of people, and they were able to get a contract with, I don't know, the local city or the local somebody here. They could handle that. And it's regular, steady, good-paying jobs. Yes, it's you, you got to understand how they pay and when they pay. But the government's got tons of money that they're spending here. Why wouldn't I want to tap into some of that? Particularly since they got to give it to people like me. That's right. They want to give it to people like me. So give me some crazy examples oh. of things that you guys buy that I wouldn't think you go and buy. <laughs> the craziest one. I got two fun stories. And okay. then I'll tell you more serious as far as what we buy. I love the crazy okay. ones. Okay. The, the first five years of my career, I started there in 1995. I was a buyer. I was in the purchasing department. And I got a purchase order to rent goats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I'm looking for here. The giant agency with the, the, the collects all this water needs some goats. For what would you need goats for? Are you eating what? grass or something? Or? Yeah, we were building the Diamond Valley Lake um, Reservoir right. and out in Hemet. And the sheer angle of the dam didn't allow us to get uh, heavy equipment Lawn up there. Mowers there and you stuff. go. And it's very important that there's no growth on a dam. You don't want to make sure you your seepage or something. You don't want anything yeah. growing on your dam. So anyways, we rented a – there was a guy <laughs> was who a had, guy. Goat, had goats, <laughs> and we rented goats to go back and forth eating. And the goats are really good at getting down to the root I and pulling the are, root. Yeah, right. The second one was I was, again, a buyer, and I get a purchase order to, to buy fish. We, all, we maintain reservoirs. Of course. And there, we have to uh, supply fish. And so this was out near Palm Desert, and I just couldn't believe that we were buying fish. Um, <laughs> Any particular kind of fish? I can't Must remember. Must be some kind of fish that eats yep. the algae or something. I think they might have been trout. But because <laughs> when you have reservoirs, you also like Diamond Valley Lake. It's really important to people. Recreation. Bass, yeah, yeah, bass fishermen. Yeah. So when the drought happened, People were too happy that the reservoirs were being drained. First and foremost, those, those reservoirs are built for emergency supply. God forbid there's an earthquake and we're cut off from our supplies in the Colorado and Northern California. You need reservoirs. You need yeah, storage. Right. So anyways, the, the lake got so low, they closed it. And boy, the fishermen, <laughs> and, and they were not happy. And, and no. so 
happy to say that we've had some great years and the reservoirs are, are, are looking full again better. here. All right. All right. Again, the point is don't take yourself out of consideration because you think, oh, I raised goats. What's the water <laughs> district going to, what could I possibly give them here? I've got a fish hatchery. I raise fish or something here. I think it's an amazing thing. But you said something key that it's hard to find. You're big. You deal with lots of big contracts, millions of dollars worth of stuff. So you tend to go to big contractors who have experience doing this stuff here. But you want to give money. You're supposed to give money a certain 25% of the small businesses. They don't even know how to find you. They don't know you exist. If they did, they don't know how to find the contract opportunities on there. And if they don't understand the labyrinth of what's required and how to fill out the paper, that's where places like the SBDC Contracting Center in Riverside come into play. Go call them up, listen to the show earlier with them, and they will help you get set up to do this. And then they've got access to all these government contract sites because you don't publish them in what? The newspaper? You don't put it on Craigslist. You're, there's some place that people go look for government contracts, and it ain't something I've ever seen before or don't even know how to find. Is that right? That's true. I guess I, I would say this, that the partnerships in the community are so critical to our success. When we first started out 23 years ago, we would go to chambers of commerce and say, just from a show of hands, who knows who the Metropolitan Water District is? <laughs> Nobody raised their hand. Right. They confused us with LEDWP. Or right. even when you and I first met, are we MoDOT? OC, right. the Municipal Water District of Orange County. Right. So there was that. And being a wholesaler that we are, we don't deal with the public. When you get a bill, exactly. I get my Irvine Ranch water. I know who they are. I know everything going on with the water, Irvine Ranch. But again, nobody knew who we were. But we were spending for, back then, five, $600 million a year. Wow. And 25%, how do we get there? We needed to cover our service area is from Ventura down to the border, yeah. Inland Empire, all of Southern California. So my team, for example, in two weeks, we're going to be at the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Bakersfield. Perfect. There'll be 40 Hispanic Chamber representatives there. So for us, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to go to one location and connect with hundreds and hundreds of Hispanic business owners. Mm -hmm. But we also belong to the National Association of Women Business Owners. There you go. Nobo, Nobo, right? That's right. Nobo Orange County, Nobo LA, the different chapters, Ventura. It's really critical for our database. Right. We have a when you go to our website and you register as a small business, you're going to put in your NIGP codes, right? The classification codes that tell us really this is your core business. This is right. what I do. Environmental consulting. Metropolitan puts an RFP request for proposal out every three years for that. And we do what we call on call contracts. We're looking for a list of you know, qualified. Uh, you submit your statement of qualifications. We're looking for qualified firms. But then as the work comes up and then we go to that list and we issue task orders. So it's really important to find out how the district, are they decentralized? We have those five mega plants in the field. A lot of times they have what they call government purchasing cards. They'll buy local in an inland empire. So if you if you come to I me I need some like, signs quickly here to put on the exactly. doors here. Let's, I got a card. Let's go buy some signs here. Yeah. Exactly. It is a resource. The more I've heard about this and the more I understand about it, the more I think, why don't I even go into this? Why doesn't every small business investigate this? Because we're all wondering... How do I expand my business? How do I grow my business? How do I keep steady? Uh, my, my customers come and go. It's a up and down challenge, good economy, bad economy. Here's a group that's spending money pretty much all the time, uh, government agencies from small all the way to large, and the people they deal with, that's the key. They've got to bring along some small business partners to qualify and to get these mega dam contracts and stuff. <laughs> and that means a bunch of little guys like us here that they would love to bring along and partner with, which gets you into this whole ecosystem. So do they start with you? Do they? Is there going to be a flood of small businesses calling them and say, hey, I got a pastry shop. Hey, I got a sign <laughs> shop. Hey, I got a something here. I got goats, <laughs> whatever. Will they reach out to you? Do they go to the website or should they go to a partner like Novo, like the SBDC, like the Hispanic Chambers, all these other ones you read about? Do they start there or do they start with you? Boy, there's multiple answers to that. Uh, the reason we belong to these different ethnic chambers, diverse chambers, is because they have programming. So when we go to the Asian Business Association of Orange County, right. has a conference coming up, I think next week, mm -hmm. we'll go there and there'll be three, four hundred members. They join the chamber. Their expectation is that. And, and you got a booth or whatever. Oh, exactly. We yeah. have a booth. We have cards, how to get certified. And then we have what's nice about some of the organizations, they do what they call matchmaking. It's like speed mm -hmm. dating for business. Right. And the key is you could just spend 10 minutes. Think about that time. 10 minutes to figure out this is something I've always believed in my career. Helping a business accelerated no or an accelerated yes, which mm -hmm. means 
hey, we're not big enough. We're not ready to do business with a, a large public agency. They're happy. They came to the conference. They made me. I learned something. I made meet 20 agencies that day, and I may only be, be able to do business with two of them. But you know what? I no longer have to pursue because time is money for the small business. Exactly. They don't have to pursue writing thousand dollar. We we've heard from businesses that putting in a proposal for a government contract it costs a lot of you know time and material money. Exactly. And so we want to make sure again they're using their resources wisely. Okay, so is there a way that they can go directly to you? Is there a website that they can check out and see if I can get on your database and go start the qualification list? Let's start there. Is there a website they can go to? Absolutely. We you can always start with our main website, the mwdh2o.com. That's mwdh2o.com. Municipal Water District, H2O Water. Metropolitan Water District. Metropolitan. Know, Metropolitan. We'll get it right, Paul. Metropolitan. <laughs> There's Municipal, which is here, and Metropolitan, which is bigger. Okay. That's right. All right. And, of course, you go there and you backslash business outreach will get you directly to our page. Or you just scroll down to the bottom and you'll see what's nice about our website. If you do, again, scroll down to, to the how to do business or doing business with us, you'll see everything from our construction, our professional services. And you can do a little homework yourself. What's, yeah. what's nice as a public agency is it's transparent. We're very right. transparent. Everything is on our site. We're not a private um, utility, so we don't we share everything. All of our bids are public information. So wow. if you're a small business and you want to know how much we buy or uh, HR contracts, if you want to get an organizational development and training, you can go on there and see the people who are bidding. You'll come to find out these are all small firms because we're looking for the best, right? We're looking for expertise, right. and a lot of times, yeah, big firms have that maybe in environmental or engineering, but there's so many other services we need from HR to IT. Hey, we're in a party and we need somebody to make a cake. <laughs> or something. I don't, I don't know. know if we buy cakes. <laughs> I'll bet you do. I'll bet somebody did retirement goats. parties or yeah. something. Hey, who knows? <laughs> All I know is it's an opportunity worth exploring. So give us a website one more time. So it's mwdh2o.com. And again, if you want to get directly to our registration page, it would be mwdh2o.com backslash business outreach. And that's one place you can go straight to the source. But you can also go to places like the SBDC's Contracting Center. Mm -hmm. Look up the Small Business Development Center. I think it's on Riverside. We did an episode earlier with them. You can get all their information. And they will, for free, because they're funded by the SBA and the state and everything, they'll work with you and figure out, am I qualified? Am I not? And they will then help you, almost like an agent kind of uh, matchmaker, see if we can find you some opportunities through all the databases that they subscribe to and pay for and open your eyes to opportunities you never thought existed because you never heard of any of these agencies and you had no idea how to approach them. They can help you with that, too. Or other groups, the Hispanic Chamber is one. We do a show for the Orange County Hispanic Chamber. We should have you come back and talk to them as well. All these people are out there saying, how do I grow my business? How do I stabilize my business? What are the source of income? Uh, can I diversify my business so I'm not just relying on this one thing? Mm -hmm. And when it goes bad, I go bad. Or when it goes big, I go big. I want to have other sources of income, other ways I can make money here, and other ways to extend my services or products here. Why do we not think of the government? I never do. Is it just because it's too big and I don't know how to do it? Probably. I, I think it's intimidating. Yeah, I, I think it is. Yeah. I think when you look at the proposals and you see the 60 pages, you may just say, I'm a small business owner. I'm grinding every day. I'm working my current cu customer list. I love to diversify, but boy, I've already got my whole family working in the business. Yeah. I, I'm just too busy to go chase and do those things. That's why, again, I I think we've said it multiple times, joining a chamber, a professional chamber, right. it may be two or three events a year, but, but you're networking. You get that one day. There's a great organization that just launched in Orange County called SBDN, Small Business Development or uh, Diversity Network. Oh, okay. I don't and, know that one. No. Yeah. And what they did, which I really is they got together with all the different ethnic chambers in Orange County and the SBDCs. And they basically, and they reached out to Disney and Edison mm -hmm. and all the other agencies that have these I want to call them mandates, but they have programs. Desire to do diversity. something. Yeah, right. supplier diversity, small business, this desire at the corporate level. What are we doing to give back to help those, what, 99% of our economy is, is small businesses in, in the United States? Right. How are, we do, how are we supporting that infrastructure? The SBDCN, the chambers, they all bring us together. And for that small business owner to have that one-stop shop, right? You can talk mm -hmm. to multiple agencies at maybe one or two events a year and then decide but yeah it's it, it can be intimidating and that's why i think we're here is we're help we're here to be a, a again an ear to advocate for you to help you understand that maybe this is not the best path perhaps 
And once somebody finds you, either directly through the website or through one of these chambers or the SDDC, and you and they get referred up to you, do you then just say yes or no, up or down, or do you say help guide them a little bit? I don't know if you really what we're looking for this program, but here's some other programs within this mysterious water world, local agencies, other things that you have you ever thought of this, or maybe I can connect you with somebody there. Do you help, exactly. or do you just stamp them yes or no? No, it's the latter. It's been the most special career for me because I've been able to do that and leverage the the resources I have, the relationships I have. I have phenom phenomenal relationships in San Diego. If San Diego agencies call me and say, hey, John, we're really struggling getting people with our construction fair, we'll open up our database because, again, we cover all six counties, and we'll We'll notify through a newsletter or we'll just notify our entire database. San mm -hmm. Diego has a lot of opportunities in truck hauling because there's no – their capacity, they're doing truck too much. Truck hauling, there you go, another one I didn't think of. Yeah, and, and even with the Olympics coming around the corner or the $30 billion renovation of the world airports, what does that mean? That means there's a lot of work out there. And right. as a business owner, which ones are going to have small business programs that really are going to help you? Ones that – perhaps say, hey, we're going to do a good faith effort, mm -hmm. or we're just going to really try our best, but really not put any teeth into the program and put some mandates. As a small business owner, you need to get decide, maybe I'll do business with the world airports because they have a boot camp where they're going to um, basically allow me to go through eight weeks and learn how to do business on the airport. And at the end of that, there's a really good chance, an 80% chance I can get work. Wow. That would be a good investment of my time. Who knew? Yeah. Thanks for coming in. We now know, and we know how to reach you. Any other ways to find out? I don't know if you want to give out numbers or names. You can get flooded with people contacting you directly, or should just all go to the website? Here? The website's great because it has my entire team on there, what okay. our specialties are. There's somebody on my team who's a specialist that support our veterans. There's somebody who's our, my construction expert. And what I mean by that is they know about every single part of our construction business right. that I don't know about because they're in it every day. Right. So if some, somebody calls up and says, hey, I've got a dewatering company or I do this, we even have an innovation arm of our company. So if someone comes and they're an entrepreneur, and of course, I, I'm really impressed with UC, UCI and this innovation hub. I've been, right. I was involved. With yeah, we're all sitting right now here yeah. in the UCI's Beal Applied Innovation Center. Here, it's right? such a cool place. And when I joined Sustain SoCal eight, nine years ago, mm -hmm. we started the first ever water solutions conference. Mm -hmm. And I nobody was talking about water 10 years ago mm -hmm. on the innovation side. They all just assumed, because other countries, uh, they're very advanced. Canada, there's so Supposedly many. Supposedly Israel, because they squeeze oh. every drop out of the desert they oh. can. And, yeah. They are the pioneers of water innovation. And so we knew that it was partnerships, right? As public mm -hmm. agencies, you need partnerships. And that's what was so special about the governor taking small businesses as a priority for him to make it a mandate that the state carve out that 25% of $10 billion. Wow. It showed all the other agencies because it was new back then. There weren't, there was maybe a handful of public agencies that had small business programs. Now the state, I think they call it the reciprocity program. They may have 130 agencies now that have reciprocity. Wow. Back in the day, we were we signed an MOU with the state in 2006. Memo of understanding. That's you guys right. love to I'm, talk oh, in acronyms here. That's right. right. I'm sorry. A memorandum of understanding. And it was key because we, again, we were the, they considered us, the secretary, Rosario Moran at the time, flew down to, to meet with myself and some other executives at Metropolitan. And she said, I like what you guys are doing here in Southern California because it all starts with outreach. It, mm -hmm. it starts with Things like this. Being on, maybe there's a small business owner listening today who was so intimidated about government contracting, and now they feel like there's a friendly voice on the other side of the phone. Exactly. Call my team. Get to the website. Our numbers are all on the website, and my team is phenomenal. We go to the office two days a week, three days a week with this new hybrid world we live in. Mm -hmm. And on Wednesdays when I'm in there with my entire team, all you hear all the time is our hotline ringing and, and my team helping. <laughs> yeah. And they're setting up appointments to meet a team's meeting with somebody maybe out in Riverside. Right. And you can have a 10-minute call about an opportunity versus driving two, three hours to, to go out there. But I have a phenomenal team. I'm going to go buy a couple of goats. I didn't realize <laughs> I could do that. That's a good business. All right. Uh, Thanks for coming on uh, today uh, and opening the uh, the curtain to this mister, to showing us the Wizard of Oz behind the uh, all the mechanisms here. And to make us feel like maybe we can, maybe we should, maybe we will reach out and find out if we have something to offer to this uh, giant world of water, I'll call it water world, and the even bigger world of government contracts that are out there for small businesses just like us. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming in. As we conclude another episode of the Profit Talks podcast, we hope we've empowered your entrepreneurial spirit. 
Reach out to us to connect with our experts, and let's take your business to the next level. Keep those dreams alive, keep pushing forward, and stay tuned for more. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast and you want your business to reach new heights, just contact us at ProfitTalksPodcast.org or call us at 1-800-616-7232. That's 1-800-616-7232. So until next time, keep thriving.